All right. What have we got next? <laughs> No, 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 look, all right, we actually have to try, you know. We might win this. Stranger things have happened at sea. And, you know, the only way you go up the ladder is by winning those matchups you weren't supposed to. So, with a with a mono-red aggro deck, you kind of have to let them punch you in the face early on. But you can't let them punch you in the face too much, because, you know... At any given moment, you could pass a threshold where they can just play damage straight out of the hand and, and end you. So we'll just take it steady, try and make some sensible trades, and I guess wait for this guy at pass turn because I'm playing against an actual sloth that has somehow learned to play Magic the Gathering. Like before, I've I've scouted Ember Cleave, and I'm getting better at leaving myself enough mana to be able to just deal with it uh, the moment it comes up. Once again, this guy is taking fucking ages to make any decision, which suggests to me that he's not the most comfortable playing mono red. All right, Jesus, mate, just click past turn for fuck's sake. Even though I've um, I've managed to deal with the threat of Embercleave, so I'm not going to lose this turn, I, I, I'm, I'm tapped out. Like, he has more board presence, he has... He's going to win this, you know. I've, I've only delayed the inevitable. I've let him hit me in the face too much. Unless... I get extremely lucky and draw... Nissa, right when I need her. <laughs> and from this point on, things turn in my favor because uh, mono red aggro decks tend to burn out if they don't win, you know, turn five or six. Whereas with Nissa on the board, I can fight f for as long as I've got lands. And uh, yeah, this, this ends as you might expect. Uh, so it just goes to show you, you know, Sometimes, if you're clever and you're lucky, which is really a kind of clever, you can actually fucking win against a mono-red fucking Embercleave deck. <laughs> so let's move on, shall we? So, having just gone from a very on-meta uh, mono-red aggro deck, we go to a very, very on-meta Azorius Saga deck. And the way this is supposed to work is you play this Saga and you get your Defender out and then you play Teferi and you bounce your own Saga back into your hand. And basically this lets you make as many walls as you like and drag the game out until your end, your end game, your victory condition finds its way into your hand. Here, uh, either because it's not in his deck or because he just didn't draw it, you know, circumstance or, or bad luck or, you know, incompetence. He doesn't have uh, a way of of keeping me off the board, which is a hallmark of control. If you're playing a control deck and you're not, you know, sniping at me and, and, and imprisoning my, my planeswalkers, you know, you know, playing a board wipe, you're essentially just sat there playing lands. Uh, and that's kind of what ends up happening, you know. He, he plays this enchantment, which, in the usual way that this deck plays out, is extremely damaging because you've put the opponent in such a stranglehold that them being forced to sacrifice a permanent every turn it is typically them sacrificing all of their permanents in that turn. And I've lost to this exact deck being, you know, that particular enchantment countless times but here you know he doesn't draw the cards he needs to make his machine work and so he just has nothing and, and, and i'm kind of glad that i've had these two matches back to back because it just goes to show you these two decks are dominating the meta that exist at opposite ends of the sort of magic spectrum 
one of them is very aggressive and 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 uh, assertive the other is very slow and reactive and yet they're both very brittle So there we go. One game away from Diamond. So let's see what's next. I'm looking forward to an even, competitive match that's lots of fun. Agonizing remorse. Cry of the Carnary. Shatter the Scar. Nicole Bolas. Magic the Gathering. A, a fun, interactive deck building game. My arsehole. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, the, such is life, such is the way of arena. Sometimes you just can get completely dunked on and there's there's no there's no getting over it. So you just got to get back on the wagon, you know? Get right back on that the wagon. I feel like getting on the wagon is like becoming sober. Get back on the on that pony and ride it to victory. So, um yeah, I got a pretty decent hand here. Uh, not much early game protection, but if there's one thing I've learned by now, it's most of my early game creatures tend to get destroyed anyway. Here's a goose. Uh, can't let that goose stay up there, because that's just mana acceleration for him. And if you do see a goose in, in someone's opening hand, it's a pretty big clue that they're going to go for a long game, so you should play quite aggressive. Uh, and yeah, it's okay for me to have quite a weak first turn because my turn four is going to be humongous with Nylea down and two druids i can basically just search for any monsters i need and that that hydra at the top is just is just icing on the cake frankly a cat food deck is is not gonna cut it against against this wall of monsters uh at one point he brings out chandra uh, this is the Chandra that summons little little haste minions. Uh, and I'm content to let her stay up. She's not much of a threat. I, I guess... So yeah, he brings this flyer out. And I guess the gimmick with his deck is that, that he eats his own plus ones to draw cards and get big. And that's, and that's a cute idea, but I just have a big wall of monsters. So I just keep playing monsters and keep... And, and here I'm like, oh, you know what? Fuck it. Go big. I mean, you can't afford to... I was going to say, he can't afford to not block my biggest creature, but he actually chooses not to, and... I guess he's doomed. Yeah. Oh, okay, so here comes Raska, finally. And, uh... <laughs> and another Witch's Oven. So... I suspect that the way that this game, this deck was supposed to play out was he'd chomp a lot of creatures early in the game and then bring them back later uh, once I'd sort of played out my hand. Um, but he just... Uh, I, I, I had such strong creatures, I just never had to make those trades. So, uh, yeah. Back on top. Hopefully this time I don't get horribly served. Okay. Game time. Now, you can tell here that I'm kind of pissed off at, at this opening hand. This one's a little better. I can get rid of that other pelt collector. He's not going to be any help. Uh, I'm starved for lands here. And these two wolf willow hollows aren't super helpful. Uh... Given that my enemy has given me no information about what deck he's playing, I decide to take a punt and build up my mana acceleration. Uh, blue. Blue's a dangerous colour. It can be quite difficult to play around, counter spells and whatnot. But I managed to get my questing beast out pretty early. There are a myriad two cost counter spells but there is not a single one cost counter spell as far as i know uh 
So this Kraken, uh, I've seen this deck before. It's uh, typically based around building up a giant wall of plus one, plus one token creatures. Uh, and in this instance, I think my, uh, my deck just gets bigger faster. Yeah, see, there you go. Each, each upkeep, that thing's going to get bigger and create more tentacles, which themselves will get bigger. And whilst uh, he's sort of leaning into the whole blue-black, uh, you know, murder archetype, I just, uh, I just play my usual shtick. Voracious Hydra here. A very rare example of a very big chomp Hydra. You know, being able to just instantly remove 4-5 off the board and buff another creature. I actually shit my pants there. Uh, <laughs> because, like I said, there are no one-cost counter spells, but when he played that opt, I thought for sure I I was going to lose this and go back down again. But no, that's it. Look at that. Such a straightforward match. Yeah, uh, you don't typically get to chomp. Uh the 4-5, but it's a very powerful move. What, what am I even talking about? Why am I even still talking about this match? I'm a, I'm a diamond. I've done it. I'm I'm a diamond boy. I'm King Diamond. Uh, holy shit. That, that, was, that, that was it. That was my final match. It was a complete squash. So it can be done. With a, with a free sort of budget deck. Let's have a look in here. You know, there's nothing much. There's nothing much. You've you've seen most of these cards before. You know, Pelt Collector. So a lot, a lot of useful two cost drops, a bit of mana acceleration, some utility spells, and then you know, some sort of mid mid level creatures and and two useful planeswalkers. There's not much in this deck, but you know, you play you play clever and you learn to play around the meta. And you too could be a diamond dog. In fact, let's let's rename this deck. This is no longer a big boy. It is a diamond dog. Good boy. Good good dog. So um What do I do now? Try and get to Mythic, I suppose.